So on the other side of the quagger bug, it's like, you know, don't you, be a quagger bug. Don't be a quagger <laughs> bug because it's going to catch up to you. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardier. And I am Horton. Horton. And this here is Frank, the man, the myth, the legend. How are you all doing on this fine Friday? Friday. Love it. What's up with the hats? Let's just start there. Okay. So I didn't give anything up for Lent, but I'm going to build up for Lent. And so every day of podcast during Lent, I add another hat. You're not doing that. Yes, I am. So Wednesday was one hat. If you look at Ash Wednesday, you'll see I'm wearing one hat. Yesterday was walk through Thursday. I had on two hats. You can't really tell because they're under. Today I have on three hats. You can see two, but I have on three. So you're prepared to have 20 hats on your head. Is that how many podcasts we'll have? I'm just assuming. Yeah. Especially okay. since I don't have to, you know what I mean? Like I have, I already have room more. I have more room in this one for more. You know uh, what I mean? Okay. And I'm doing it for the Lord because the higher the hat, the closer to heaven. I think that's what, what how the Tower of Babel went. And I don't <laughs> think that ended up too well. I would love to speak a bunch of languages. <laughs> I don't think they got to speak a bunch of languages. I think none of them spoke the same language. Oh, so I won't be able to understand my own self, which I already don't. Well, guys, what's going on? It is Friday. It's a special day. It is um, March 4th. Yes. Oh, it's almost your birthday. Oh, it's your birthday weekend. Are we allowed to say that or do you not talk about your birthday? I don't talk about my birthday. Well, we're going to because on Sunday it will be, no, yeah, Sunday is now, your birthday. Okay, March 4th, get it? Like March 4th and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, uh, I don't want people to steal my identity. So my birthday is October, October, October 25th. You use a different name every day. I don't think the birthday is what's going to. Into- also, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be like labeled. By your birthday. Yeah. Because also I wasn't there. So what if they wrote you were. the wrong. You were there. <laughs> I wasn't conscious. So I don't, I have to trust that people did everything correct that day. Well, so this is your birthday weekend, regardless of if they messed up the exact day. May or may not. If you want to celebrate, just like we don't know when Jesus was born, they celebrate at Christmas. If you don't know when I was born and you want to celebrate in early March, that's on you. Well, it is her birthday weekend, so put the happy birthdays down in the comments. Why don't you? Happy birthday. Um, It it was also Dr. Seuss's birthday. We'll get to that later, earlier this week. You were both... You know, you're right. You you were calling him Teddy, I think. And um, Theo. uh, But I remember you said something about Teddy and and his good friends did call him Ted. Because um, we know his name is Theodore Geisel. Right. And we know that under a, a pen name that's not Dr. Seuss, he would do his last name backwards. Right. Which was Lasig. And we knew he did something with his first name. Okay. It was Theo. But when we were trying to think of what does Theodore turn into? I'm like, was it Theo? Was it Teddy? Like but Teddy now Roosevelt. I hear that his friends call him Teddy. Ted. Ted. Maybe Teddy. I don't know. Graham. Graham Teddy, Cracker. Teddy Roosevelt. Um, which we did a podcast on. We did. Guys, it's on March 4th. So like you said, March 4th. That's actually one of the holidays day. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, it's March 4th. And it's to March 4th to your aspirations and your dreams to get up and, and just start going. Um, Pennsylvania's slogan, state slogan is pursue your dreams. Every nice. state had every state, not every state, but you're supposed to have a slogan. Okay. Ours is that it was chosen by, uh, at the time it was Governor Rendell, and he did a contest, and a guy won. Oh, um. Well, I'm glad you brought up Pennsylvania because okay. it's another holiday, and it is uh, <laughs> r- uh religious experiment day. Holy, holy experiment day. <laughs> It's Holy Experiment Day, which sounds kind of intense. Sounds like you're doing like holy experiments. It sounds like Batman. How? He he says holy all the time. Batman does? Yeah. Ho- holy pothole, Robin. Batman is known for using... He prefaces everything by saying holy. I never read comics. Holy... Holy cow. I don't know. He, the, he said holy all the time. Yeah, I never read comics. The new one's out in the movies now with uh, that guy named Robert Pattinson. Do you think he would make a good Batman? No. You don't? Mm -mm. He's not charismatic enough. Um, I don't think Batman's supposed to be charismatic. That's why he like never really has like much of a love interest and like 
He's sort of like that's the whole thing with bats. Like he hides in his cave. I know, but I don't know. There was something lovable about lovable, lovable about the TV show Batman. I didn't read comics either, but I watched the TV. You probably show. like the one um, with the uh, that Adam West. Mm-hmm. It's probably more your speed. I love Adam West, and um, it was so funny how he was the mayor. No, the he was something in some show. Was it on he was the Family mayor Guy? Family Guy. Yeah, <laughs> but um. Yeah, so it's it's r- r- Holy Experiment Day, which goes in along with um, the founding of Pennsylvania. So Holy Experiment Day is the idea of being inclusive to all religions and appreciating all faith, which America, one, was founded on the Pilgrims, but especially Pennsylvania with William Penn oh. and the Quakers, who were very accepting of beliefs and ideas. So maybe the whole experiment is to be open-minded to those who don't share the same beliefs as you. Absolutely. But it's more religious. Day. Who would have thought March fourth? Such a such a such so many holidays based upon spirituality and the deeper meaning to life. Because it's also World Day of Prayer. World Day of Prayer celebrated by over 170 countries. Really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to start the weekend. Holy Day of Prayer, which I like because you know. It's World Day of Prayer, which isn't really uh, inclusive to, just like Holy Experiment Day, prayer isn't inclusive to Christianity, but it's a very Christian... Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> inclusive. Sounds like Christians aren't invited. That's what I mean. It's not, <laughs> very, not very exclusive to Christianity, but being Christians, it is Ash. It was Ash Wednesday. This means this is the first Friday of Lent. Mm-hmm. So obviously, as Christians, it's, it's, it's a day of prayer, but part of that Holy Experiment is it's prayer. Everybody can pray. Everybody. Everybody. Pray. Higher can. power. Everybody you're praying. Can. It's important. Buckle down and pray up is what I say. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, thank you. That's good. So uh, we'll be praying today. We'll be inclusive today. Also, National Tartar Sauce Day. Just to throw that in Well, the it's Fish Friday because it's Lent. Oh. And what do you need for your fried fish? You need some tartar, tartar sauce. sauce. You need some tartar sauce. Do you like tartar sauce? Probably. I've never had it. Oh, you would like it because it's kind of pickle-based. Ah, you know I love pickle-based. Uh, do you like mayonnaise? I, I do. I'm more of a Miracle Whip guy, but I'll take some mayonnaise. Then you would, like, you would like it. It's, okay. like a, it's like a tangy ma- mayo with um. I can't imagine I pieces. wouldn't like it. Yeah. I could see myself putting that on some fried fish. Yeah. Why not? I already had meat today on accident. Don't uh, sue me. It was an accident. I didn't go on TikTok. It's okay. Cool. We talked about this. We did. Whew, I have to go rewatch our Ash Wednesday podcast. Yeah. Well, we, I don't even think we did talk about not eating meat on Fridays. No, but we talked about the point of the observance isn't yeah. the observance itself. That's not what's saving you, but it's the mindfulness. Right. Popeye's has a, a, a fish fillet sandwich if you're interested. I don't think... If I'm not eating meat, I would even go to Popeye's. Okay. Like, I think I love Popeye's. It's probably one of my favorite places on the earth. But um, I think if, yeah, no meat, I'm going to go to Long John Silver's. Okay. <laughs> I've never been to Long John Silver's. I, I know. I don't think we have any close by. No, we do not. But um, anything else on this or March 4th? No. No. 3422. Two. The numbers aren't even that great. Hey, but it's, it's Friday, and so it's always good. So we're going to March 4th fourth to our next segment guys it is friday and on friday for the past i'm gonna say 10 weeks yeah oh it's a lot i know no I'm maybe not 10 maybe like six i'm like counting the books as i'm trying to th- but i think we're missing a book too whatever it's been a couple months we have been doing something called dr seuss friday okay mm-hmm. you know it you love it and what we do on dr seuss friday is we read a dr seuss book which is inherently a kid's book. Yeah. But most recognizably. But there are not books that like are kids in the sense of it teaches you how to read. It's what makes it kids is it's silly words, rhyming, fun illustrations. But you, oftentimes you find that the meanings are quite deep. Yes. And you can get something out of it. Yes. So now with our semi adult brains, we are going, we read them and we try to get a little bit of a deeper me- message from it. Right. Or a, uh, Message that we can carry with us in our adult lives mm-hmm. as spiritual people and as just good moral people. Yeah. And uh, it's obviously it's an extra special week because it is the week of Dr. Seuss's birthday. Read across America. Theodore Geisel. Yeah. 
Theodore Geisel. It yeah. is his birthday week, Read Across America week. And so we have a little something special for you guys today. I know you Dr. Seuss heads watching are like, you're reading us books we've all seen before. Oh, huh. happy birthday to you. Been there. Done that. Green Eggs and Ham. I can read with my eyes closed. <laughs> um, Isn't that one of the books too? I can read yeah. with my eyes closed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, see what I did there? But today we have this book right here, which is not even just one book. No. And it's not even a book at all. This is called Horan and Quaggerbug and More Lost Stories. Okay. And so that second part is really what this is. Theodore Lessig. I always forget which one is the real name. Theodore Geisel. Geisel, yeah. Theodore Geisel, obviously, was a writer and an illustrator. Not everything he made was for books. He made he did little stories that would go into magazines. Mm. And after the magazines were being sold, they'd get thrown out. They were never published into a hard copy book that we see with so many books. Okay. So this person who who got these together went back and looked for these lost stories mm. of Dr. Seuss. And so we are blessed with four stories that I don't know if you've heard about before. <clears throat> so this will be the next the next month we'll be reading from this oh, book. Oh, I love it. And so uh, we have Horton and the Quaggerbug. We'll be reading that today. You probably know Horton. There's a show, right? Yeah, well, because some of his characters go... Horton in, Hears a Who. Horton Hears a Who. Marco comes late. Darn Marco. That. How Officer Pat saved the whole town. Back in the blue. <laughs> <laughs> and the Hubub and the Grinch. And I'm sure you guys know the Grinch. But okay. do you know the Hubub? So he had these characters in his mind and, and they, they were, they, they were they, you know, like the Marvel universe. Yeah. There's all connections. There is a, a Dr. Seuss universe. Yeah. That is oft not talked about as much. Right. So today I am excited to tell you guys that we are going to read Horton and the Quagger Bug and let you know these were for magazines never heard before until this day. Right. I, I'm the one who created this. I'm the one who did the deep, deep digging. Yeah, that's awesome. Because at that time there was no internet. So there was no archiving in a place where you could go find it. There was not. So the magazine. Just... Oh, wow. That's a full story. Uh, that's it. Okay. Hey. Sit back and listen. It's Friday. Get some Dr. Seuss before you go out and do your your, your Sodom and Gomorrah activities. Uh, not during saying. Lent. What? Not not on Friday. As long as you're not eating meat. Everything else is yeah, fair game. everything else. Horton and the Quaggerbug. It happened last May on a very nice day. While the elephant Horton was walking, they say, just minding his business, just going his way. When a Quaggerbug dropped from a tree with a plunk and landed on Horton, the elephant's trunk. The Quaggerbug leaned towards the elephant's ear perhaps you are wondering he said why i am here well i've got a secret he whispered i know of a bezel nut tree where some bezel nuts grow bezel nuts horton looked up with wide eyes bezel nuts this is a happy surprise for all of the nuts in that jungle to eat the nuts of the bezel by far were most sweet but why horton asked do you tell this to me well you see the bug answered my bezel nut tree is rather far off, and I'm not very strong. I'd get there much quicker if you came along. So I'll make you a deal that I think is quite fair. You'll furnish the legs and you'll carry me there. I'll furnish the brain, show the way to the tree. Then half of the nuts are for you, half for me. A deal, Horton said with a smile on his face. Hold tight and we're off to your bezel nut place. Just steer me and show me the best road to take. No road, laughed, laughed the Quaggerbug. We'll take the lake. And he steered the big elephant down to the shore of a lake that was 30 miles, maybe more. Oh, oh, shivered Horton. Now wait just a minute. I can't swim that lake. It has crocodiles in it. Just look at their terrible teeth, how they flash. They'll chew me right up into elephant hash. I think, Mr. Bug, that there surely must be a much safer way to your bezel nut tree. Now, now, said the quagger bug, don't start to squeal. You promised you'd go. A deal, And a deal is a deal. Hmm, Horton thought, which he says is quite true. What he says is quite true. A deal is a deal. I must see this deal through. So bravely, the elephant dived into that pond, and he swam and he swam for the shore far beyond. While Crocodile snapped and attempted to eat, his tail and his ears and the soles of his feet. They nipped at his knees and they nipped at his chin, 
and he thought and he, as he fought that he would never win. But he swam and he swum and he held his trunk high with the quagger bug on it quite safe and dry. A terrible fellow, that quagger bug guy. Just sat there and bossed him. You hustle now, hustle. I furnish the brains and you furnish the muscle. So from ten in the morning till quarter past two, poor Horton fought until he finally got through. To the side of the lake where the bezel nuts grew. He crawled from the water, tired, battered, and wet. Now where, Horton asked, are those nuts that I get? Oh, laughed the quagger bug, you're not there yet. Climb that, said the bug, pointing at this in the sky, at the terrible mountain, 9,000 feet high. Climb that, Horton gulped, not the way that I feel. Tut, tut, said the bug, now a deal is a deal. And don't start to argue, no ifs and no buts. You'll furnish the ride, and I'll furnish the nuts. The climb, sighed poor Horton, will kill me, no doubt. But a deal is a deal, and I cannot back out. He drew a deep breath, and he threw back his shoulders, and dragged his tired legs over rocks and big boulders. He stumbled and staggered uphill over stones that tattered his toenails and bruised all his bones. While the quagger bug perched on his trunk all the time, and kept yelling, climb, you dumb elephant, climb. Oh my god. <laughs> uh -oh. He climbed, he grew dizzy, his ankles grew numb, but he climbed and he climbed, and he clumb and he clumb. His hearing grew faint and his eye sight grew dim, but he clum and he clum and he clim and he clim. From quarter past two until 4.45, till finally old Horton, more dead than alive, had carried that bug to the very tip top, and then only then did the elephant stop. And he gasped to the bug and he sank to his knees. Now where are my bezel nuts, sir, if you please? Right there, said the bug, Horton looked true. It was true, t'was a beetle nut bezel nut tree where the bezel nuts grew but bug horton moaned we're here and we're there we're here and they're there way out on that peak and between us is air now how can i get through that space in between i can't walk on air if you see what i mean a deal is a deal snapped the bug i'm the boss you stretch out your trunk and you put me across stretch horton stretch yelled the bug so he stretch he stretched it two feet but it still wouldn't touch stretch horton stretch yelled the bug so he stretched it hurt him real badly but he f but finally it reached at last sang the quagger bug chuckling with glee and he slid down the trunk to his bezel nut tree and he picked all those nuts and he stacked a big mound of luscious sweet bezel nuts high on the ground but hey called the uh, elephant you over there half of that mound don't forget is my share not yet, said the bug, all the nuts have been stacked, but before we can share, they've got to be cracked. So he cracked all the nuts, then he said with a laugh, a deal is a deal and I'm giving you half. One half of each nut, as you know, is the meat, and that is the half I am keeping to eat. But half of each nut, as you know very well, is the half of the nut that is known as the shell. The shells are for you, laughed the bug, and he rose, and he stuffed all the shucks up the elephant's nose. <laughs> Now what would you do if he did that to you? With shucks up your nostrils, how dreadful you'd feel, but you couldn't complain because a deal is a deal. You'd have to act terribly nice and do right, so you'd say in a voice that was very polite, Thanks, Mr. Quaggerbug, thank you for these, but they tickle my nose, so look out, I shall sneeze. And you'd sneeze and you'd sneeze and you'd sneeze and you'd sneeze and blow all the shucks from your trunk with a whiz, just the way Horton did. Cause they blew out of his and they blasted that quagger bug so far away that he sailed through the air for the whole month of may <laughs> and didn't come down till the 15th of june all tattered and torn in the late afternoon at a place that so far now he never can go to his bezel nut tree where his bezel nuts grow the end never heard it <clears throat> never heard it Horton like, and the quagger bug i like it I like it too. I was taking notes in case I forget. Okay. So um, in the beginning, I thought it was going to be about cooperation mm. <clears throat> because my you you we but we it's a two person operation you know and I have the knowledge the map yes <clears throat> the brains as the bug said and the elephant had the wherewithal the <laughs> physical attributes logistics and the strength but then. Um, as a different book we read of his, of taking advantage, it happened again. Right? Yeah, um, Fidwick, the big-hearted oh, moose. Oh yeah, 
Because... It, was, it was sort of like that. Yeah. But where, yeah, where Thidwick, it was like they were using him, like his, they were taking advantage, they were of, taking advantage of, his, of, his, his of his kindness. His, his generosity. This is false he, promise. And, and, and um, was the elephant blinded just by wanting what he wanted and not? Wanting the buzzle nuts yeah. or whatever they were so, called. So what do you think? I think, yeah, this is about false promises. And yeah, I guess being blinded by things that are too good to be true, maybe? It's it, it, it since it is the month of March. It really reminds me of a leprechaun story. Ah, yeah. very leprechauny, where the, the bug would be the leprechaun, and he just wants what he wants, and he he can't do it himself, so he needs to trick somebody else into helping him. Yeah. get what he wants. Um, and then I was thinking <clears throat> that it would be like the devil, yeah. tricking you and giving you false promises, and you you putting out a lot of your own energy, thinking you're going to be rewarded, and you're not rewarded in the end. Although the elephant did get him back, right? Because now the bug can't ever go back to the beetle nut tree from what I heard. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not even going to look at the last page because um, I know I was thinking of it in a like, spiritual way. Kind of like uh, televangelists. Oh, yeah. You know? um, not dissing on, on all televangelists because that's such a broad term. That's just yeah. everyone who evangelizes on television. Through media, yeah. But I'm talking about, you know, like specifically ones that are... Hey, if you want to be in the Lord's favor, you send me money where it's like right. he can't get money without you, right? Right. And he's given you this false promise, but really right. it's just for his gain. Right. And it's like he gets all the – and that's the idea, right? Oh, he's the brains. Like he knows it all. Yeah. Uh, Horton is just a person who's the physical one doing everything. Right. Because even when they're in the lake, he's like he was just sitting there. Yeah. And he's like, oh, but I'm helping you out. Yeah. I'm getting you to these bezel nuts. And it, it's that idea of – of getting these false promises and then putting yourself to in, harm's do, way. in harm's way, you know, and obviously this is physical harm's way, but like we can do it financially or spiritually if mm-hmm. we're trusting. And it's like, you have to see where the motives are. And it's like, is someone just out for themselves? Right. And, um, yeah. And look out for, before you get all the way up to the top of the mountain, um, in the beginning, I think it was just through the water, the alligator water, um, already I was thinking, are the nuts worth it? Mm-hmm. Because he had been bitten and he was so tired, you know. Yeah. And and um, this 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 bug was a good motivator because he said, "We're no, we have to keep going. We have to keep going." But if Fortin had thought, it, "Are are the nuts going to be worth it?" I'm already I've already been attacked. Yeah, and um, and Horton is a follower in the story, right? Like, mm-hmm. and you know, Horton could be a. Uh, Majority, like it, you could change Horton to a bunch of people and yeah. this one leader who knows the right. answer. And I think that's the very first thing is indicative to that because that showed, that should have showed Horton right there that the Quagger bug does not care about me. Right. Like I am just a, a, I am just a means to an end for this Quagger bug. Right. Even if they split it in half. Right. Right. They didn't. He he tricked him again at the very last second. Big so trick with that, yeah. We obviously know that the quagger bug is not good, but up until then, the quagger bug is is just using right Horton and not putting anything in it, in it as well. Like you know this uh this like diagram of like this is a boss and this is a leader. And yeah, like the leader's in front. Right, and that's what we see Jesus as. Right, like Jesus is never do this for me. Right, and it's like it's always I'll be with you in the crocodile lands and it's also not when I mean, we'll split it it's right it's like and so the quagger bug is you know as a juxtaposition to that is hey i i'll tell you where it is but you do all the dirty work and then when you do that and it's like oh you can try to write it off like he cares about me it's like he's a small and all that and then at the end you get you see the real side of him right yeah so, and not just a fan of the old quagger bug just like thidwick um, Thidwick was a giant moose and there was like fleas taking advantage of him and we talked about that too that it's not about who appears to be bigger or yes. you know because now you have again a giant elephant tiny bug the tiny bug is leading the giant elephant the, the, the elephant didn't even know his own strength or power because you know he didn't have to look to the bug for direction Yeah, and the bug needed him um, and he used him and uh, yeah, and to go back to one of your earlier points, that we didn't really talk on 
it is that I, I guess a little bit of an idea of that getting lost by greed. Mm-hmm. And it's that like when you get, when someone promises you like, oh, if you give me $10, I can turn it into a hundred. And it's right, like, yeah. we all know if we get an Instagram message like that, it's spam, but there's much more um, smaller scale things mm-hmm. that we don't see, or it's like a person we trust. And yeah. it's like, we get blinded by, oh, but it makes sense because like, I could get something. You're out right of it. because your your hope is so high that like he yeah. never would have gone through those shark and in, in, infested waters. No, but he was just caught on that like, oh, but it, and also that deal is a deal. He kept saying, yeah, they kept saying that. So what do you think that was about? Because that was that was that was repeated through the whole thing. Deal is a deal. I think just like in Thidwick, we see that we see and um this idea of being honorable to a fault. Okay. And it's like, but I made a deal. And it's like, right. Horton as, Thid, or Thidwick as a, a big hearted moose, Horton as a big hearted elephant is like, I made a deal. I'm going to be honorable. And then you're putting yourself outside of your comfort like, right. zone of things that you wouldn't do. Right. And we talked about it in the Boundaries podcast. Okay. And we talked about as Christians, should we have boundaries like that? Or right. should we just be like, oh, the Good Samaritan story tells us no matter how much danger it is, we should put ourselves in it. And we were saying it's important that you you set boundaries for yourself that like so people can't take advantage of you right. so that you can continue to live a good if he if just like Thidwick I said if he had gotten um shot by the poachers with Horton if he had fallen off that cliff right it would have been for nothing right for a, deal, a deal is a deal right Horton or for the Buzzleberry bush you're right it's it's you should be able to be strong and that's what we said in, in the last one we said. You should be able to be good, big-hearted, but also strong in your more like your what's right and what's wrong. You're right. And if it's if it's something that goes and th- remember, remember these books, even though we're reading them as adults, they are for kids. Yeah. And I, I always try to like see it from a lens of like what is that? And oh, uh, the Quagger Bug is, is someone who's smarter, more intelligent, and um, you know, knows more than I do. Yeah. And it's like, don't get caught in that idea of like, oh, but we made a deal, and it's like. You, like, you need to be able to stand up for yourself right? and and not let someone who appears to be smarter or knows better than you push you to do things that you're not comfortable with. Right. Which he wasn't. He wasn't comfortable crossing the river. He wasn't comfortable. And yeah, and, and um, allowing people to use your own, um, your own morals or principles against you. Yes. You know, so a deal is a deal. Like that's how I feel. And I don't want to go back on my word little did he know that the bug was planning yes you know he was using double talk the whole time He's using your your kindness against you right and you need Save to look out you be careful about that you know it's uh and a lot of the you know like and not to go completely off the, but with like the armor of god mm-hmm. that's like a lot of the little things that you don't talk about of like what are you really protecting yourself from right and it's like things like this it's like yeah it's that idea of emboldening yourself where it's the armor of God, so it's with faith and it's with love. Mm-hmm. But you're not there, like um, weak and and weak and naked. It, it's you're right. you are strength. You are strong, powerful. You can make decisions, right? All based in love, but yeah. also not being taken advantage of. Yeah, your your deal should always be with God for to take care of the gift of that He gave you, which is you. Yes. So you are your the greatest gift God gave you, and and um, to get that out of your mind that someone else will come before that yes so you can be generous and kind and 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 um, sharing and so forth but if he had looked and to know now what do you think about the revenge was that revenge that um horton took on him i don't know because it was worded interestingly yeah where was it revenge or was it karma? Oh, you know, because he had a sneeze. He he shoved him up his nose and he sneezed and he got shot out. Right. And so on the other side of the quagger bug, it's like, you know, don't you, be a quagger bug. Don't be a quagger <laughs> bug because it's gonna catch up to you. Right. Like like by like it's like uh you know the butterfly effect mm-hmm. and it's like oh you won and then by you doing that bad thing ripple effect again that was Thidwick too right because they all got killed and we they said were all murdered. if we think of them as the main character. Yeah. They made a mistake by trying to take advantage of somebody else. So if you're Horton, be strong in your moral code. And if you're the Quagger Bug, figure it out. But that's Dr. Seuss Friday. And so we'll be reading this book for three more weeks. So don't get tired of looking at it. Um, 
happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Um, it's Holy Experiment Day. Pennsylvania. And World Day of Prayer. So pray, wish happy birthdays, <laughs> and um, experiment. We'll be back next Wednesday with Walkthrough Wednesday. With another hat. With One Word Wednesday, another hat, no TikTok. Go out, eat meat, don't eat meat. Do what you think will make your relationship closer with God. Peace. <laughs>